Today I'm going to be installing the Ring Alarm Home Security Kit. Let's jump right in. I'm going to install the base station first. This is pretty straightforward. There are two spots on the back where the hooks go, where you mount it flat against the wall or a, any type of flat surface. It comes with a five volt charging cord that plugs into a receptacle and it's approximately six feet in length. Things to consider when setting up your base station. Does it have cellular service where it's gonna be installed at? An event that the Wi-Fi goes out, it will use the cellular service as a backup. Is it within five to six feet of a receptacle? Or can a receptacle be added within five to six feet? You also wanna make sure that it's in a spot that can be heard everywhere inside the home. I've got a 1400 square foot home, so it can pretty much go anywhere and be heard throughout the home. I'm choosing to put mine in the living room up high, and I've got a couple of options of where I wanna plug it in. I think the easiest is gonna be borrowing the power from the microwave receptacle. To do that, I am gonna to have to drill a couple of holes, one through the wall that goes into the pantry, then through the top of the pantry wall, out into the living room. I went with the one inch paddle bit. That was probably a little bit of overkill. It's, I really wish that this low voltage DC plug was straight. I could have used a much smaller hole to fish the wire through the wall. I marked my spot where I wanted to fish the wire through and hang the base station, but there happened to be a support stud there of some kind, so I had to drill a few inches underneath that. Now that I got my wire fished through the hole, I can go ahead and install the base station onto the wall. I'm going to be using some drywall screws with a small head to mount this. I'm using painter's tape on the back of the base station to mark where I'm going to be putting my mounting screws by poking a hole through the painter's tape at the center of these mounting holes. Make sure that my tape is level, then I'm gonna place the tape where I want to mount the base station. Then I'm going to drill in the two drywall screws into the stud. Next, I can put my power adapter plug into the back of the base station. Now I can mount my base station onto these screws. As I just plug the power in, some of the lights on top are going to start flashing that it needs to connect to a Wi-Fi. On some of these models, you can also use a straight Ethernet cable to connect as well. Everything from here inside of the Ring app is pretty self-explanatory. It will walk you through all of the steps that you will need to do to activate the base station. I ran into zero issues doing this and everything seemed to work flawlessly. I don't want to leave this big hole here. It looks kind of ugly. So I bought a decorative plate that I can put over that. With the home base powered up and already connected to the internet, it's identified all of the accessories that the ring alarm system has came with. I'm now going to install this contact sensor on this door. The way that this works is when these are more than an inch apart, it will trigger the alarm. This plastic film right here, when removed, will activate the contact sensor. This other plastic film with the small blue arrow will reveal the sticky side of the contact sensor, which can be attached to the door or wall. I want to make sure that I can place this in a spot to where it will, it will be within an inch of each other before I stick it on and activate it. You can see here it is not flush or flat. I'm going to have to stick this at an angle. That will work fine as long as they are not greater than an inch apart. Now I have a rough idea where I want to put the contact sensor. I'm going to go ahead and pull on this plastic tab to activate the ring contact sensor. If you are having trouble pulling the plastic tab, you can just lift up on this back cover and pull it out from under the batteries. Then you can slide the cover right back on. Now I'm going to peel back the film, protecting the sticky part from the blue arrow. Then I'm just going to hold it there for about 10 seconds till I know that it has good contact with the door. 
If your door or window is dirty, you want to go ahead and clean that prior to sticking these contact sensors on. Going to do the same thing for the other end of the sensor. It's closed on the phone, so our connection is good. Now I'm just going to stick this on. Hold that for about 10 seconds with some firm pressure. Give it a quick test. Now let's name our contact sensor. Finish setup. We already did all of this. Done. Now I'm going to set up the keypad, which arms and disarms the alarm. And you can also do the same thing from the app. Unlike the base station, this does come with some mounting hardware and also a plug. I've got my plug right here next to the front door. I'm going to mount the keypad right here. The back of the keypad will slide down. This is your mounting bracket. I want this to be level with the light switch. I'm not using the mounting brackets because I will be hardwiring this in the future. I just want to keep it simple for the purpose of this video. Hook up the USB cord to the back of the keypad. Make sure it goes all the way in. Go back to the app, check the ring keypad. I'm going to hit that. Continue. Going to create an access code real quick just to keep it simple for demonstration purposes. We'll do one, two, three, four. Keypad we have disarm, home mode, and away mode. To activate any of these, enter your passcode. To disarm, and away. Exit delay started. We've got our keypad set up, we've got our home base set up, and we've got a contact sensor set up. I've got several more of these to set up. Then we'll go ahead and set up the motion sensor. Now, to install the motion detector, we have four sticky spots on this, and that's because Ring recommends putting these in a corner of a room, if you are gonna put it in a room, just like that, about six to eight feet off of the ground. And that is what I'm going to be doing before I do that. Here's the tab, just like the contact sensors. This has to be pulled out. Once this is pulled out, the battery powers the device and the motion sensor is activated. This one pulls out pretty easy, unlike the contact sensors. Peel back the plastic that's covering the adhesive. I'm gonna do the corners because I'm gonna put it up on a wall corner. Now, whenever I arm the system, this motion detector will set off an alarm if it detects motion. I still got to play around with it quite a bit. I do have a cat. I don't know if the cat's going to set it off or not. One last thing to hook up is the wave extender. If you're having issues getting connectivity with your farthest device, they say to stick this in a receptacle between the furthest device and the home base. I got my eight piece home security monitoring system all set up. I will be adding other things to this in the future. I'm going to keep the monitoring on practice for at least 10 days until I get the hang of it before I let it go live. I've been testing the alarm system for a couple of days now. The first day, the sticky side of the motion detector fell to the ground during the day, triggering a false alarm. I was home when it happened, so there were no sirens as the system wasn't armed, but it's good to test to make sure that your 
alarms are going to stay up for several days with no issues. Slam the doors, open and shut the doors, make sure that they stick to the surface before going live and having your home professionally monitored or even setting the alarm because the alarm is loud, loud enough to where the neighbors are going to hear it and they'll probably call the cops if you don't have a subscription service. One thing I'm trying out to remount these to the textured wall, specifically the motion sensor is this Gorilla Putty. I don't know how well it's going to work. I've had success with this mounting stuff to textured walls in the past. Let me know what you guys think. Also, another thing about the subscription service I left out in this video is you may need a permit. They will send you all that information to your email if you decide to sign up to have your home professionally monitored. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Dave. See you on the next one.